I start, I would like to ask you to close your eyes just for a second. Now, picture a scientist. What is the first image that comes to mind? You can open your eyes again. Did you picture a professor in a white coat? Maybe Einstein? Perhaps someone who is bright and smart? Or maybe someone who is difficult to understand? Emotionless? Boring? Maybe not a person you would hug right away? Now that is problematic. Not so much the idea that you don't feel like hugging a scientist in a literal way, but the fact that there is a gap between science and society. Let me show you something. This is an abstract of a random science paper that I found online. And this is what it says. Autotrophic ammonia oxidizing bacteria, AOB, are a crucial component of the microbial communities of nitrifying wastewater treatment system. Nitrification is known to occur in reactors of different configurations, but whether AOB communities are different in reactors of different design is unknown. I think that this is relevant information, but it's quite hard to understand. Now, of course, this is a specific discipline with its own jargon, but research has shown that the overall readability of science papers has been decreasing over the past years. If scientists start to confuse other scientists, how can we expect that journalists and science communicators can translate scientific knowledge into a language that we can understand? Whether you're interested in science or not. We all deal with science in our daily lives. It's right at your fingertip when you use your smartphone. It's in the car you drive, and it's at the basis of our vaccines. Each year, millions of researchers worldwide publish more than a million scientific articles, and just within the Netherlands, millions are spent on research every year. Research drives innovation and our economy. We count on science to build our standard of living. This makes me wonder. If our tax money is spent on research, and if science has such a huge impact on our daily lives, then why does science at the same time feel so far away from us? Now, this is me. About 34 years ago, and over the years, I have developed a mission. My mission is to connect science with real people like you and me. Because I believe that bridging this gap is a win-win situation. It can lead to better science, and it can help people to better understand the world around them. But it takes two to hug. One way to connect science to society is by making people part of science. You might have heard of projects where people are asked to count the number of bees or birds in their backyards. Another interesting example is this so-called Galaxy Zoo project, in which worldwide people are asked to classify images from galaxies online. So far, fans of thousands of volunteers have participated, and it has helped astronomers to make numerous discoveries, such as the first planet with four stars. Projects like these help science, while at the same time, it opens up the world of science to people like you and me. Let's consider what happens if we don't connect science to society. Well, then we will live in a world where there is knowledge inequality. Where some people possess a lot of scientific knowledge, while the majority doesn't. And not only that, there will be room for distrust, fake news, conspiracy theories, and misunderstanding about climate change, for example. Now, 
there is convincing scientific evidence out there showing that climate change is not a hoax. But who to blame if these findings are behind closed doors? And even when it's out there, it's communicated in a language that doesn't belong to most people. So how to change this? Let me give you a real life example. About a year ago, a famous Dutch influencer became active in one of the anti-COVID movements. She got invited to one of the most popular TV talk shows in the Netherlands to share her idea. Now, at the same show, there was a scientist and medical doctor. You can imagine that this was about to become a quite uncomfortable situation. But something great happened. The scientist listened to the influencer acknowledged her frustrations and invited her to start a dialogue about it after the show. She joined, and so did her one million Instagram followers. Now, they might not have hugged each other in a literal way, but they did in a figurative exchange of insights. It's a great example of how science can connect to people through dialogue, where it's not only about facts, but where there's also room for emotions, values and beliefs. If we connect science to society, then this can also inspire a new generation of scientists. What did you see when I asked you to picture a scientist? The stereotype idea of a scientist is still this white old man in a lab coat. Well, it's time to pop this bubble. A recent study showed that worldwide, less than 30% of researchers is female. And within the UK, less than 1% of the professors is black. We need a diverse palette of scientists to represent the diversity in our society and to be able to respond to all kinds of societal needs. There's actually science out there showing a clear link between academic diversity, especially ethnic diversity, and scientific impact. We also need a new generation of scientists that is able to communicate in a way that most people do. Like this so-called Instagram doctor. She knows how to share medical science with more than 30,000 people online. Now, at this point of time, you might probably think, fair enough, but easy to say if you're not a scientist. Who are you anyway? Well, I used to be a scientist for more than 10 years. I obtained a PhD degree in neurocriminology and worked as a postdoc researcher at different universities. I know how hard it is to connect science to society once you're in the world of science. I started with the ambition to change the world, but the more I matured into the role of being a scientist, the more I got focused on doing research, writing papers, getting grants to be able to continue doing research. There was very limited time, budget and training to share my research findings with non-scientists. Now, unfortunately, this situation hasn't changed much over the last years. Though new initiatives have been released to support scientists to connect to society, I didn't want to wait for the system to change. We all take journeys in life. And last year, I decided to quit my job as a scientist and start a new career in science communication. I now help researchers to translate scientific language into a language that can be understood by everyone. I also think that researchers should get decent communication training early in their careers with a special focus on online communication. Let's give them the tools and skills to connect to society and to become more huggable. On the other hand, it is important that people acknowledge the value of science to their lives, and I think that this should start at a young age. In a way, kids are like mini-scientists, they just love to ask why, why, why. Well, let's nurture this inborn sense of curiosity so that at a young age, children start to acknowledge and appreciate the value of science to their lives. It takes two to hug. So scientists, step out of the closet and start sharing science. And for those who are not in science, stay curious. 
Keep asking questions, seek for signs and hug it. Because knowledge can improve the quality of your life and it can help you to better understand the world around you. So please, keep your inner mini-scientist awake. Thank you. <laughs>